In order to study powerful and devastating hurricanes, NASA uses special research aircraft designed to survive a voyage into the heart of the storm. In 2012, scientists will finally be able to study another kind of storm in a hazardous area high above Earth when two very tough spacecraft, the Radiation Belt Storm Probes, are launched. The Radiation Belt Storm Probes, known as RBSP, will help scientists understand how geomagnetic storms caused by our sun affect the Van Allen radiation belts. Highly charged particles in the belts can harm satellites and astronauts. Scientists want to study the radiation belts because there's a lot that we don't know about how particles um, and events travel from the sun through the Earth's environment and affect the radiation belts. Learning more about the belts will allow engineers to build tougher satellites better equipped to deal with the harsh conditions there. We also have astronauts that are out in space, and the more we understand about the radiation, the better we can protect those astronauts. This is a field where we go out there and we're doing things on the cutting edge. We don't necessarily, uh, we don't understand everything. And now we understand more, but if we're ever going to work in space, if we're ever going to harness the things that are out there, we have to understand the environment. And RBSP is going to go a very long way towards doing that because the radiation belts are one of the most hazardous area that we have in space. The RBSP team needed to build two extremely rugged spacecraft in order to perform science studies in the radiation belts. Building a spacecraft to operate in the harsh radiation belt environment was one of the most challenging things for me working on RBSP. We added a lot of shielding to some of the electronics. We also did a large test program where we tested all of the parts and materials that we're using on the spacecraft to make sure that they'll be able to survive those doses of radiation. Radiation is, is bad for electronics. It causes processors to reset. And um, so if you just flew your computer through the radiation belt, it really wouldn't work. We need to have all the electronics up and operating through those main events. And so we've taken um, just adding thicker metal walls around all the electronics boxes that stop a lot of that radiation and prevent them from getting to the sensitive electronics inside. We have a transceiver that has highly sensitive parts on board that spacecraft that's going to have to survive this harsh radiation environment. One of the things that we've done to mitigate that is actually build our radio almost like a tank. There's lots of charged particles, and it's very likely that the electronics on this spacecraft are going to freeze up at some point or lock up, much like our home computers do. And when they lock up, you like to reboot them. Most spacecraft that we build are designed to be powered on and stay on forever and never turn off. But because of the likelihood of a lockup on this mission, because of where we're flying the satellites, we've designed in an ability to send in commands from the ground to remotely reboot several of the important boxes on the spacecraft. The other design challenge facing the RBSB team was the requirement to build two of these radiation-hardened craft. Because the radiation belts swell and shrink over time, two spacecraft are required to understand how the belts are behaving both in size and shape. Each RBSP spacecraft carries an identical set of five instrument suites designed to study how the radiation belts change during geomagnetic storms. These instruments will provide scientists with previously unavailable data about the fundamental processes behind particle acceleration and reveal the mechanisms behind the radiation belt's behavior. RBSP's data will also lead to more accurate space weather prediction models and help improve future spacecraft design. As with every spacecraft NASA launches, RBSP undergoes a series of rigorous tests to ensure it's ready for its mission. We'll actually put the spacecraft in a room and uh, turn up the speakers and blow loud sounds at the spacecraft to simulate what happens during launch. The team also simulates RBSP's operations while the spacecraft are in the cold and hot airless vacuum of space. We try to simulate the environments that the spacecraft will be in and that allows us to go into launch with, with high confidence that the spacecraft will actually work when they're up there in, in their flight environments. To see the spacecraft working for the very first time after it gets up there in space is really gratifying because you've worked so hard for so many years planning it out and to see it finally work, it's pretty cool. That's probably the best part. 
The most rewarding part of my job as project manager is seeing the team come together and see their handiwork come to fruition. And ultimately, the biggest reward is when we launch and see the two spacecraft come to life on orbit.